What are we? I think we have the right to ask. I think we have the right to never stop. Anything born with the necessary curiosity has the right to ask what they are. And damn anyone who tells you that you don't. But who do we ask? Some people say it's a question for religion. Yet, if these same people found a strange object in the street, if they wanted to know what it was, which of them would take it to a priest before a scientist? So why consult a priest as to what we are? And what answers do we get if we do? And how do those answers affect us? The most popular religions, the three Abrahamic religions, are pretty much all in agreement. You're the shameful, sinful creature, willed into existence by an all-powerful, all-knowing, perfect God, so that he can forgive you for not being perfect. He's in love with you, and he just wants you to love, worship, and obey him back, forever. To accept this, as free humans, we must accept that it is right for us to kneel and worship. And to accept that, we must accept, somewhere in our being, the idea that we are lesser, even shameful creatures who should beg their maker to forgive them for not being what they could not be. These religions will tell you what you are, but they'll also tell you what to think and what not to think, who to trust, who and what to love, which part of a thief to cut off, which part of a baby to cut off, and with which hand to wipe your arse. The good news is that in all of his books, when God speaks in any verifiable detail at all about how we came to be, he gets every detail wrong. Maybe he was wrong when he said we should be ashamed of ourselves. Where is the God so perfect it wouldn't want us to kneel? Where is the God so perfect they couldn't bear the sight of us on our knees? If I'd made a million tiny robots and programmed them to love me, to worship me, to sing songs about me, and to weep at the sight of my perfection. You'd call me at least twisted. So it's not that religion tries to force God on everyone, it's that the God they're usually pushing is insane. And it rubs off on the rest of us. If we allow ourselves to believe in a God that approves of a single human killing, the killing of any human becomes arguably sanctified. The more we agree that nobody ever really dies, the less of a sin murder becomes. It's like a horror movie. Here we are in the 21st century, and a large chunk of the world still worships the God of Abraham, the father of the Jews and the Muslims, and an inspiration and an example to many Christians. A man supposedly commanded by God to kill his own son, to pay back a debt to the creator of the universe, and to prove his love for that God. What must these religions do to the mind of the believers to even allow them to describe the story of Abraham as beautiful? Which of us would leave Abraham in charge of our children? Imagine how scripture and theology must pervert the pathways and processes of the human mind and perhaps the very psyche of our species when a God that calls for the murder of any child can be described with a straight face as perfect. It all seems so primitive and that's being kind. It seems an all-powerful God can do anything except take back a single barbaric word of it. And only the true believer doesn't know why. Instead of asking a God what the universe is, we can ask the universe directly, through science. Unlike God, the universe will answer, in a way, in numbers, measurements and readings. Numbers can be wrong, but unlike words, they never lie. Mistakes will always be made, but it will be the numbers that eventually expose the error. Numbers have told us what the gods never could. And billions of answers later, we've gone from rubbing two sticks together to colliding protons head-on at close to the speed of light. The numbers conceptually allow us to go to places we will never go 
and see things no eye could ever see. The center of a star, the formation of the first atom. What people don't understand is that when we refine our understanding of a single atom in a laboratory on Earth, we see every star in the universe more clearly than we did before. It would be poetic if it weren't true. But does it being true take away any of its poetry? You might say I have faith in numbers and my answer would be you take your holy book, I'll take a parachute and I'll see you at the bottom of the cliff. The numbers tell us that we are animals, we are atoms and we are energy. We don't know where the energy came from, but 14 billion years of purely natural cause and effect does not suggest a perfect supernatural first cause. It would be unnecessarily demeaning, woefully incomplete and simplistically inaccurate to think of ourselves as just energy, just atoms, or just an animal. A flash of lightning can't build a hospital. And we can't be just atoms unless you can fairly describe music as just sound waves. And it's hard to see any animal as just an animal when you think of the big picture and you think of how rare life might be and how vanishingly rare intelligent life probably is and when you're aware of what big time can do it's hard to see even a microbe as just a microbe because it may not always be a microbe I doubt this weighs heavily on the mind of the dolphin or the ape when they come to our assistance or on ours as we try to help them it's just instinct but fish don't do it Reptiles don't, birds don't, while empathy seems common amongst intelligent social animals. But if we feel something that compels us to act, who are we to say that they don't feel something that we might recognize as love? And if we go to heaven, why can't they? What are we, ultimately? I don't know. But isn't that freedom? Think about it. No one can tell you what to do if no one even knows what you are. You're more free than you think. Dear children of Abraham, or those that would emulate the faith of Abraham, I'm not saying there wasn't a creator. I just can't believe a mind that could or would make this universe would share exactly the same insecurities, the same need for respect and recognition, the same demand for loyalty, submission and obedience, and the same murderous rage as the worst of human kings and your average alpha male chimpanzee. What are you worshipping? Forgive me. It's hard to be pro-understanding without being perceived as a militant atheist. I wonder if you can figure out why that is. From a high vantage point, by the light of a star, you can see a long way, 13.7 billion light years to be exact, whereas deep in darkness you cannot see what is right in front of your face. On a jet in a storm at night just before landing, being violently thrown from side to side, I turned to my friend in the window seat to see if he was as frightened as I was. He was laughing, pointing over his shoulder at the silhouettes of the treetops passing by the window at 200 miles an hour. I asked why he was laughing. He said, why not? They say, and I have reason to believe, that sometimes we're at our most alive when facing the prospect of our own mortality. Maybe that means that if we convince ourselves we live forever, we never really feel alive at all.
children of Abraham, as kind and as good as you are inside, and as highly as I value those attributes. By being a follower of the Abrahamic God, you are essentially telling me that the creator of the universe once roamed this planet, pointed at a human child and said, kill that for me. What am I supposed to do? Tell you that you may have a point. <laughs>